Greetings, growers from around the world. Jordan River here, your host with The Grost. Today, I have a breeder feature for you, talking to breeders, getting uh, to know these folks and their values and why they do what they do. Today's feature is predicative breeding. He is an East Coast femme breeder specialist, creator of the New England Rock Candy. It's a great episode. I know you're going to enjoy today's breeder feature. Before we jump in, going to give some love to Plant Success, aka Plant Revolution, the creator of the Great White line of products. That's right, Great White Myco, King Crab Beneficial Bacteria, Orca Liquid Myco, the Myco Chum. You need to try it all. It can be added to almost any setup. I even saw a DWC grower in the group posting their roots after adding Orca and King Crab. It was insane. The transformation was crazy. They were long, noodly roots before. And then the after pictures were just nuts. They were completely lateral branching and thicker than all get out and shorter too. It's, it's crazy. It just, the plants went absolutely bonkers for it. But if you're in a soil grow, you can use all of their products, throw in that myco chum, throw in whatever you like. Love plant success, AKA plant revolution. They make the great white line. Go and get it. Everybody microbial boosters. Try the King crab. The King crab is where it's at. Beneficial bacteria formulated for increasing photosynthetic potential and uptaking nutrients and all of these different wonderful outcomes that we're looking for. Go and try them in your local hydro store, folks. Check them out and try that King crab. You heard it from me. All right, everybody, let's get into today's breeder feature with Predicative Breeding. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to Growcast. I'm your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Before we get started, I urge you to share the show. Spread Growcast. It's how we grow. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Give a good rating and review if you would. I appreciate each and every one of you listeners. Today, we have another breeder feature. You fans love the breeder features, talking to breeders about their strains and their values and all that fun stuff. Today, we have Predicative Breeding, a very prolific Instagram breeder on the line. What's up, my friend? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for coming on the show. You've got a wonderful Instagram page here, uh, at Predicative Breeding. Is, the, is it that simple? Yeah. No underscores, no weirdness. No, no. Uh, well, I mean, ironically, I get kind of cross up. Uh, a lot of people say predictive, but it's uh, it's predicative. So, I mean. Uh, <laughs> predictive <laughs> breeding. No, predicative breeding. Yeah. Go give them a follow, everybody. You'll see why as soon as you hit the page. Uh, some really impressive stuff, man. You've got some fire fucking strains, some really frosty looking looking gear. Um, before we get into the specifics, though, why don't you tell us about how you got into breeding, uh, what your values are, and and all that fun stuff? Yeah, so I, um, you know, I've been growing since I was 18. I mean, I never really got like extremely deep into it, other than just kind of like letting it run. But uh, I would say like three years ago, I just had to kind of like really get in the industry. And uh, ironically, initially, what I wanted to do is strictly help um, vets with PTSD because I have uh, a lot of military family, and you know, a lot of people don't really understand, or maybe they do. Is uh, you know, it's a big thing that uh, that are just they're trying not to to turn to pharmaceuticals, you know, and mm-hmm. it's a big thing where they read these cannabis, but they can't use cannabis and some, you know, however they do, some people do behind the scenes. But, um, so that's kind of where I geared directly towards. So, and I knew a lot of the good medicine is, you know, in some of the stuff that we're not tampering with nowadays. And that's like in some of the heirloom and land race strains where the, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to find, but it's there, you know, just the, the cannabinoid profiles are, are more stronger in certain, certain things and versus what we have now where, mm-hmm. you know, you figure, people were just breeding for either terpenes or visual aesthetics, but nobody was really following the cannabinoid profiles from the eighties until now, you know, or even maybe even the seventies are just kind of doing what they wanted to do. Um, you know, especially during the prohibition, they were cross, you know, breeding out the turps and stuff like that. So I just kind of, so I was playing with that stuff and, uh, you know, I was, I was working with a lot of vets and seeing what helped them. And I was, you know, getting a lot of emails from these guys that saying that they helped them a lot. And, uh, so I was doing that for a while. And unfortunately it was just like, uh, and again, it's not about the money, but I was just like kind of burning a hole in my pocket because I just was like going backwards instead of forward. So I sure. kind of ended up creating a seed company so that I was able to do both. So I could help these guys and still, you know, help the community. But basically, you know, the, any any type of money that I've ever collected, it just goes back into the into the business for the community. You know, I, I'm not, um, you know, a lot of people are just, and I'm sure you know a couple, but they're just like about the money and I, I could care less about the money. I like that, man. I like that a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an interesting line because you do deserve to be paid for your work and to make a living and to be able to put, you know, fucking food on the table so you can make more seeds. Right. But you're right. Some people, when they put money foremost, 
that's usually when the the problems arise. Usually there's something else to the forefront, whether it's uh, just a love of terps and getting high or something a little more noble and deep, like helping those who are suffering. The ones who really shine, in my opinion, have something else first, and then the money kind of follows. 100%. Yeah. I mean, as long, if you take care of the people, the people will always take care of you. I mean, right. that's, that's been that's been true business since, you know, since we, before we were born, you know? Yeah, that's exactly right. But I like that. I, I do want to say I love that that uh, that veteran message and, and helping with PTSD. That's a really powerful message that a lot of breeders share. And I'm glad to hear that echoed here again. Yeah, it's a, I didn't know. I mean, I knew it was like a thing, but I didn't really know how deep it was until I started getting deeper into talking with some of these guys. And, uh, you know, I've gotten a couple of emails back that's kind of teared me up that, you know, like, hey, man, I'm able to sleep. Like I had a granted the strain is kind of retired or the variety is kind of retired now because uh, I ran out of seeds. But, um, you know, I had this uh, heavy cherry indica strain called Afghan cherries on my website for a while. And I mean, I was getting emails back from these guys saying that they could sleep, you know, and it's like, wow, like me and my wife, had, or mostly him, but like basically they haven't slept because of the back and they had back surgery from being in war and like right. there's, there's all these other issues. And like, you know, it made me tear up, man. It's like, wow, like totally. I actually feel like I have a purpose, <laughs> you know, that I'm doing something here. That's so, uh, powerful shit, man. That's yeah. powerful shit. Well, listen, we want to talk about your strains. Um, strains gone by uh, good, but but what people really want to hear is what you have available now, what you're what you're currently working on and what they might be able to go and get their hands on. Can we get into, um, I don't know, just some of the strains you want to highlight most or let me put it this way, best represent you? Yeah, well, it's uh, sounds like a double-edged sword. So uh, I've been, initially when I launched the business, I had some really good material that took me a while to, to get before I put it on the market. Mm-hmm. And um, the reason being is I fully believe in uh, stress testing your genetics. And uh, before we get into this, I feel like it's like a really important thing to do. So like before I even got anywhere into trying to mainstream uh, any of my seeds to the public, um, I spent two years just testing varietals. And that's like, I'm talking like flowering photo period plants and solo cups Jeez, you know, to make dude. them extreme. Root. Yeah, man. Uh, put, like driving up my, uh, uh, you know, obviously I'm in, indoors, so I'm intense. You know, I don't have a facility or nothing. Uh, but I was driving temperatures to like 110 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, lacking oxygen while that was happening, letting them get completely bone dry till they would, you know, bend over and bring them back up. And through this process that I was doing it, because I knew there's a problem in the industry with feminized seeds, and that's where I was kind of going. And, I, and in general, you know, there's a lot of intersex plants. Uh-huh. You know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of companies just shipping, crossing two beautiful plants, and they're wondering why everyone's having intersex problems because they're not really testing to see if they're strong girls. You know, if you have strong girls to begin with, you won't have those problems. And that's a fact, you know, so I was doing this testing for two years and whatever, and I lost 90% of my seed stock because they would have intersex traits or AKA Hermes, as we all know it. And uh, the percentage that was left over is what I've been breeding with. And I haven't had any problems, man. I don't even look anymore for any of those traits with all, all my seeds are feminized, by the way. And I've never, I don't even look anymore because I don't have those issues. Um, so it's just a big thing wow. for anybody trying to get into breeding. Uh, it's, it's, if you want to get into breeding and you don't want to have a, a bad representation of yourself, it's really important to, uh, stress test your, your genetics. Well, so you're selecting for, obviously when you're dealing with that feminization, you know, it was such a problem back in the day because you used to create those seeds by stressing them. Whereas now you are selecting specifically for, it sounds like, uh, at least two things, ease of growth and then stability, intersex stability on these feminized seeds. Is that correct? And, and you are creating these seeds with like a spray, right? Isn't that how everyone's doing it now? Hundred percent, yeah. So uh, I started off with colloidal spray. Well, to answer your first question, yeah. So basically, I'm I'm environmentally damaging them because um, you know you have home growers who are starting off, or even you know well, again like so some of these people, some of these plants that are producing fire, you get them a little bit stressed, and they're they're like, oh shit, I'm, I'm stressed <laughs> out. And the, and the whole point of of the the Hermy, just so everybody is, is clear, is it's a natural tendency for them to to do that. And then what it is 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 if they were going to die, what they do is they want to turn male and spread pollen before they pass away to continue yes, their race, exactly. you know, and, and I know, you know that Jordan, but I'm um, sure so other people know. And, but basically some are more sensitive than others. Well, you don't want the sensitivity uh, ones, especially if you're going to be a start a breeding program. So what I do is I was, I was testing them to get the strongest girls possible. Like I have some plants that you'd have to do some pretty extreme stuff to try and get them to turn, you know, and it's, <laughs> which makes it harder for me in regards to getting pollen from them. Let me tell you, <laughs> but, uh, Jeez. But yeah, and, and then yeah. So I use a spray called uh, silver thiosulfate, which is a, a very good product. I did start with colloidal. Colloidal does work as well. Uh, as well. I wouldn't say it's, it's it's a little more expensive, uh, to be honest. But uh, SDS works well. You just gotta be really careful with you know you you do want to wear personal protection gear. Give me um, that name again. Like that. Silver thiosulfate. Silver thiosulfate. 
Yep. And to give everybody a really good link to go to, which is extremely easy and how I first started off with, uh, and it works, it's a really good base, is if you go into Google and you type in Steemit, S-T-E-E-M space I-T, and then type space S-T-S, there's a pretty, there's a legitimate recipe there that uh, I I send everybody to. And it's, it's a good starter if people want to try and get into that. Oh, Steemit.com. Well, I would, I would, I just type in steam it STS and it'll, that specific, some the the article specific comes grower. right up. Yeah. You're right. How to yeah. make and use silver thou sulfate. Right. You called it. Oh, damn. Wow. Good pictures too. Yeah. And I use that and uh, I did, I've done very well from there. That's kind of where I started off. That's killer, man. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Cause I've wondered that before and people have asked for the solution and I've heard the same thing about colloidal silver that it works, but maybe that it's not effective as some, some others and that it's more expensive. So Silver thiosulfate. Interesting, man. I appreciate yeah. that tip. Yeah. Yeah. And as, what I've learned through my experience is uh, the more potent, and this might be, this is my experience only, so I'm not trying to like start stuff, but the most, the stronger the plant, meaning like, you know, like let's say like Mac 1, is this like extreme frost, extreme, you know, like potent, whatever. It's harder for them to turn and throw pollen. So uh, you actually have to increase dosages from that STS. Ooh. To basically f them up more to make them think that they're going to die and and lose you know lose themselves. So then they actually because I've I just did a full run this last round where I got an entire I had a two five foot females that fully which, which was a lot of spraying let me tell you but uh they all they went full male but the issue I had was uh, they didn't give pollen so I had sacks everywhere a full girl you know two two one hundred percent strong girls went full male but I didn't get pollen so. Uh, which that just tells me I have to I have to up the dose because I didn't I didn't do a good enough job. So don't, you know. And for people that are spraying, you have to keep in mind like you might see a hair or two, but you just need to keep spraying and just trust in the process. Um, but you might have to adjust. You know, there's not one spray like that that chemical that that ratio you're gonna see on that guy's website doesn't just work for all plants. Yeah, every plant is different. That plant that spray might work for a majority, but it you know you have to either increase or decrease uh, depending on what happens to that variety. Wow. So, um, and and that would relate to stability in your observation, which makes sense, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, well, for them to throw pollen, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it, that doesn't quite bother. Well, it bothers me for one because I'm trying to get pollen off of them. But uh, in regards to breeding with them, I've done prior tests to see if they are willing to uh, show those traits. So I try not to mix. You know, the, the gender and the pollen are like kind of two different categories in regards to. Uh, I see. Intersex. Okay. Oh, man. Very interesting stuff. The feminization process has always fascinated me, again, uh, especially since the the invention or the, let's just say, proliferation of these types of sprays. We'll be right back with Predicative. Before that, AC Infinity, the creators of the best grow fans on the market. ACInfinity.com is the website. Growcast15 is the code to save you 15%. Send us a snapshot of you using any of our codes and be entered to win free seeds. Send those in DM on Instagram or email contact at growcastpodcast.com. Send us you using our codes and you're entered to win free seeds. Use the AC Infinity code, folks. Upgrade your ventilation. AC Infinity makes the best fans in the game. They're feather light. They're whisper quiet. Even the simple series, the S series, has a 10-speed fan controller. And now they have an all-new smart series. Not to mention tents. Not to mention other types of uh, ventilation if you need, you know, the uh, slat vents or whatever. They've got everything you need at acinfinity.com and code GROWCAST15 works nearly site-wide. So upgrade your ventilation. Your plants will thank you later. Don't use those heavy, bulky, crappy fans. And uh, AC Infinity has you covered. Code GROWCAST15 also works on Amazon, but only one time, that code. All right, everybody, let's get back to predicative breeding. Strains though, let's get into it. Talk about yes, talk about yeah. uh, your best, your most um, prized feminized strain. I know they're all feminized that people can go grab right now. Right. Well, my flagship is New England Rock Candy, which is uh, you know shout out to Alien Genetics because basically my that strain's parents is Alien Rock Candy, nice. um, but it's not the same clone. It's it's from a whole different. Uh, it's siblings upon siblings going down, so it's not that clone. So it, it did get renamed because it's not that clone, but. Uh, that is my famous one, and that's what I launched. And I mean, I've had tons of experience. The downfall is I'm currently in the process of making more seeds, so that doesn't that doesn't help many people. But what I do have right now is I have a website. Uh, it's the letter P followed by breeding.com. And uh, right now I have some good crosses on there. I have some uh, a Bruce Banner line that I've, I've worked on that's called Diesel Candy. That uh, Always beautiful flower coming out of that, really strong flower. 
I have some wedding cake crosses. I have, well, I also have some raw candy crosses. So I do have crosses from that raw candy uh, into some wedding cake and some Bruce Banner that I've, you know, I've looked at the children and then I back cross and I, and I found some really good phenos. And then I, um, you know, basically brought those to market uh, once I knew that they were, uh, you know, the seeds were good. But right now what's exciting. So, I mean, I have some really good material. What, what's there right now is still really good stuff, um, but I am running extremely low. So that's that. basically what's on that website now is going to be shutting down with probably within the next three or four weeks. But um, I already have a tent right now that's full of some of those mothers that I've had that I've kept because they're just prize winners um, and that I stress tested. And then I also have extras coming that I've worked and found in the last two years. And uh, basically, I'm doing a collaboration with a uh, Green Bodie, which uh, some people might know that Instagram handle. Oh yeah, right. Yep, and uh, and Mean Gene from Mendocino, who's a who's a beast, which we definitely all know. That's killer, dude. Yeah, yeah. So Mean Gene's got some seeds coming this way. Uh, Green Bodie sent me some pollen, some fem pollen. Uh, we're gonna do a collaboration, and then Russ Brandon's gonna is looking through some mails right now. We're gonna do a collaboration as well. Damn, with dude. My, with my knowing and rock candy, so. You're already collaborating with a bunch of the guests that we've uh, had on the show. We got to get me and Gene on. Uh, we're working on that one, but uh, yeah, that's dope, dude. man. I didn't know you were so involved in uh, in the whole universe here. This is this is great. The collabs are coming. Well, you know what's sad, man, and uh, you know, and uh, I want other people to know this too. Like, not everybody's on the same page, Jordan. Like, I've reached out to a lot of people, and they just they because you're not on the same tier as them, they don't want nothing to do with you. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of aggravating. It's like, man, like we're all we're supposed to be a community. Like I get everybody has their own brand, but like if you look at my page and you see that I'm trying or I'm like I'm putting good work or good pictures or good material, like yeah, at least give somebody a chance, you know. And Green Bodie, who's got like a, a hundred something thousand followers, is, is that kind of guy. He's like just you know, kind of like me. He's just like spiritual and like let's you know give everybody a chance and like love people. And he's just like, yeah, man. He's like, let's do this, you know, right off the bat. But like other guys have reached out to. You. I'm not going to name names because that just causes bad. Uh, right, right. Bad vibes. But they didn't respond. Like it shows that they read it. But then you know, but Mean Gene was like, yeah. Damn, dude, that's really cool. I know exactly what you mean, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and that is cool because you're right. The the community kind of was born out of that, right? The sharing and the sharing and caring. The care bear. The care bear philosophy, right. if you will. <laughs> but yeah, no, I know exactly what you're saying, man. So that's dope. I'm excited for the collab. The Breeders Cherry Cake and Breeders Cake looks very, very interesting. I'm taking a look at pictures now. Damn, dude, you've got some good options here. It, yeah, it does look like some are sold out, but... Fuck, I'm I'm just taking a look at peabreeding.com right now. Very impressive, man. Yeah, I built that whole website, man. That was an interesting feature. I had a Windows 98 uh, <laughs> background. <laughs> <So>. Nice. Well, hey, yeah. it's uh, it's working. The Tropical Candy Kush, also uh, something that people should take a look at. Yeah. Ooh, I like this one. Strawberry Diesel uh, crossed with OG Kush. Mm. You know what's crazy, Torn, is I've had, I've sold easily over, I don't know, Jeez, maybe eight thousand seeds, and I haven't had. I have sorry, I had one variety come back that I think had some intersex traits, but I also think that guy had thrips and some other stuff going on. So I don't know, but I just have really, uh, you know, and w- what I'm known for is I just have like solid feminized seeds. You know, wow. so people want to start a breeding program or they want to start getting into stuff like, you know, and something like I mean, you can go anywhere you want, but I mean, I just have really good material that's like. Uh, not sense of that because it's a big issue. You know, I mean, I still hear it now. Sometimes I forget about it because I don't hear. It, but then I hear like, oh, this guy's got herms, or that breeder's got herms, he's got herms. You know, <laughs> I don't know. You're officially saying not here, especially with the feminized. I think people appreciate that, man. Oh, definitely the feminized. Yeah, I like this message. You've got stable, strong feminized varieties. Another thing that I see here is you sell them in affordable sizes. Pick up right. three or five seeds. I mean, listen, I'm here in a five plant count state. You know, that's all you need, five feminized seeds, if you can trust that they won't harm on you. So uh, it's interesting. You're cutting out a nice little niche here. Well, ironically, about a, a, a three or four weeks ago, I actually was giving people quantities of any anyone. So some, some a lot of people were ordering one seed, <laughs> but uh, it was just becoming a, a small issue in regards of life. So I, I switched it to three packs at minimum. <laughs> so Hey, man, I think people appreciate the three packs for sure. Yeah, because I, I knew how it was. I mean, I used to go, I mean, I don't know if you were doing this, Jordan, way back when, but I mean, I used to go in seeds, man, you know, and back to, there, you could like, you could order one, one thing, you know, I was like, shit, that's a pretty good idea, you know, because <laughs> sometimes you're broke, you know, you got a couple of 10, 20, 30 bucks, but you want a, something new. So why can't, you know, why stop people from shopping? Yeah, that could, uh, that could start a whole grower's lifetime journey right there. Right. 
I got to ask about specific traits and profiles. I know you said the Afghan cherries is sold out, but honestly, this might be one of the most desirable looking ones um, that I see here. Can you talk about the Afghan cherries and and what it tastes like and smells like and, and all that? Yeah, so I, I can't, uh, I'm all about plugging people and I can't recall because that was like one of the first things I've gotten of this. I can't remember if it was like, I don't even remember the website, man, to be honest, but it, it's an old one. Yeah, it was an it was an Afghani strain, man, and that thing was like extremely heavy yields, uh, short and squat, like medium sized. But I mean, man, and the the flower was one hundred percent cherry cough drops. You know, it was like just this delicious narcotic variety, man. It was just like it was extremely good. And when you cry, I mean, there was two phenos. One that was kind of real, extremely short, which was all right. But then the um, but it was almost like a fifty fifty profile. You get the second one. That was a really good yield there, kind of vigorous. Um, it didn't really like being indoors because you could tell it was from being grown outdoors. You know, once once you take something that's been cultivated outside or it's that's basically you right. know grown outdoors, and you try and bring it indoors, they don't enjoy that as much. Right. <laughs> but but yeah, she was she was a champ. I mean, uh, I do plan on uh, doing another self or an S one of the mother because uh, I still have a buddy of mine that has the mom herself. But um, I do plan on relaunching those. But I do have some crosses with her. Um, Ooh, what did you cross it with? Let me take a look at these crosses. Are they up here? Yeah, it should be. I think I had New England cherries, which I did the rock candy by the cherries, but that might be sold out, ironically. Yeah, I, th- I think it probably is. Damn. Yeah. I mean, they all look good. Uh, oh, it looks like you have auto flowers as well. I do. Do you breed yeah. these auto flowers? Yeah. Uh, well, no. So I am. But uh, Oh, you're, uh, you partnered with uh, Mandalorian, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yes. I love some Mandalorian. He's been on the show like three or four times. Yeah, he's a really honestly, he's like a a really good guy. Yeah, I've been talking again. He was well, he was part of the podcast, and he's part of. We have a, uh, you know, like a private uh, chat room on Instagram, and uh, yeah, he's an, an amazing person, really good at what he does. And uh, I basically was like, all right, well, how do I, you know, how do we help the community better? So I was like, hey, would you want to be, you know, kind of like collaborate a little bit? And he was like, yeah, of course. So uh, you know, so he's on there, and I actually I have some stuff that I'm going to send in the mail. I have some. Some stuff. Uh, I think it was like shish cabariato. Something I, I I purchased a long time ago. And man, those that flower was like when you do a stem rub, just on the stem and veg. I mean, it was like this greasy, extreme blueberry cotton candy grease that would come off of this auto flower. And uh, so I, it was something special to me. So I kept breeding with it and playing with it. Well, I haven't had time to go further in that project. And I asked him, "Hey, like you know, if I send you this, would you want to you know see if it's worth anything and play with it?" And he said, "Yeah." So. Uh, that'll be in the mail. Maybe we can get some kind of a an anvil, cotton candy anvil or something. You know, I don't know. That'd be killer, man. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think really the rock candy cake takes my eye. Yeah, that was a really good wedding. That was a wedding cake that I got as an S1, and I went through that entire pack. A bunch of them had intersex problems. I found one that was good, really good, extremely potent in regards to you know, the cannabinoid profile, but more intense with the terpene profile to where even with all my um, carbon filters running, it was extremely, it didn't help. <laughs> like the whole basement was just extremely bad. So I crossed my million rock candy into her and that's what that, that cross came out to be. And uh, so it's a beautiful, strong, it's just beautiful seeds, man. They all can't, I haven't had any problems and they all have uh, really good feedback from everyone that's uh, taken those and grown them. Oof, man, it's too much here. Yeah, that's, this is a, uh... Quite, quite delicious what you have. I, I think we should probably highlight the breeder's poison quickly. It looks like a, a nice sativa. You, oh, this is a Durban, huh? Yeah, pure Durban, man. Um, so it's not, not an extreme heavy yielder, but if you're like a connoisseur, I would highly suggest uh, going that route. If you like sativa, so for, for me, sativa is a little bit too much. <laughs> a little racy? Oh, man, like like beyond crack. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You hear that, sativa fans? I know we have some serious sativa fans on this podcast, so... It's oh, a very man. interesting looking plant. Yeah. I mean, it, it, but it's not just like straight speed. It's also like a, you know, a, a mystical, like Gandhi type high too, because it's still kind of pure in its own form. You know, um, a lot of the flower nowadays, and I mean, I know you've heard it too, like it's just lacking so much stuff, man. If you take stuff that we were, you know, I don't know, how, uh, you know, the age group of your audience, but like if you take stuff that we were smoking, like I'm 33, you know, stuff when I was like 16 and 18, I mean, the high was, was different. 100 percent you know it wasn't radically different but it was different you know you were it was more like calming and spiritual and like kind of trippy versus just like just like a just high but like with no 
I don't know. It's just different, man. No balance, no depth. Do you think? Yeah. That, do you think that has to do something with increased THC levels? That's how I feel about a lot of extracts. Sometimes, man, like you get this really high THC extract, and it like kind of rips the balance out from underneath the high, and you just kind of get like blah. Or do you think? It, I don't know. I'm not sure what you attribute that to. Either a gene pool thing, or like a, a potency, not not enough focus on terpenes. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I don't think anybody really knows the, the true answer to that. But yeah, I believe there's something wrong. You know, I believe like if if you smoked like skunk weed in the you know early 2000s, and then you try and smoke biscotti or whatever that the cookie spam has, it's like two totally different highs. It, <laughs> it is. Maybe a lot of it is the genetics. There's probably some nostalgia in there too. Right. But yeah, man, that's it's an amalgam of things. What what are your cultivation principles? Are you big into the sustainable regenerative thing? Do you use bottle newts? Because most people use bottle newts. What do you uh, and people are going to grow with them? What do you do? Well, I started off with salts, which I'm not knocking anybody that does that because it uh, it does perform well. But as I got further into growing and caring more about like health and you know, especially people consuming my products, I decided to switch to organic and. Um, I mean, people might deny it, but I mean, uh, you can't get the, I mean, <laughs> you can I say it. Well, you can say it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't want to say you can't, <laughs> but the product is slightly different going from salt to organic. I think that's fair to say. No one can deny that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Cause I don't see the same shit on the same plant. Like, so like, let's, let's, let's just be honest. Like I've grown like the rock candy, which like not only are her sugar leaves completely triked out, but like I'm getting stuff on the large families when versus me being an organic, I'm, I'm like getting to the tips of the sugar and like nothing on the fan, like whatever, you know, like it is what it is. <laughs> so, right. But, right. but you know, there's pros, like it's healthier, it's cleaner. Uh, I do notice a different uh, effect in, in regards to um, using the product. So I will say that. So like, I mean, I definitely, you know, if I were to smoke salt type weed versus weed that's organic, I definitely have a, I feel like I have a more cleaner, lighter high versus on an organic flower, but that might just be because I'm more sensitive or maybe just my endocannabinoid uh, system in general. Um, but yeah, so I started with salts and then I switched to organic. Right now I use um, Michigan made uh, MM, M3 soil and, oh, nice. uh, you know, that only, yeah, that only lasts maybe like a month or so, but uh it lasts a good bit, but then I basically uh, add uh, roots organic amendments to it, mostly uh, bottled notes or bottled organic notes to that. Mm -hmm. um, and I do very well with that. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, again, like, yeah, it looks a little bit different, but it's a, it's a really clean product. And if you have good plants, I mean, they still perform really well. And so, oh, yeah, man, I'm right there with you. You, you, yeah. um, you actually kind of echoed my story. You know, a lot of people go from the salt based nutrients to a living soil style. And I could not be happier with, like you said, the final kind of consumption uh, product, the flavors and the aromas and that sort of thing. You're a fan of the uh, M3? Yeah. So I tried So Hum and uh, man, I had like, it just didn't last that long and oh, I had to really? really care for it. Interesting. I mean, well, that's just my experience. I mean, I don't know if- uh, No, I please. Yeah, everybody, yeah. Go ahead. You can tell Yeah. So So Hum was all right. And then the, what's the other one? Um I mean, there's a lot there. Uh, De Detroit Nutrient Company is out on the east, is closer to the East Coast. There's the Pride Lands, yeah. Purple Cow. There's a uh, Total Harvest Control. There's um, Environmental Soil Solutions has one. None of those. No, there's one more. <laughs> uh, uh, Big Roots, Soil King, Big Roots. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh! It was a uh, Coast of Maine. Had oh, one. Stonington Blend. Oh shit! How did I not say that? Okay, yeah, that's yeah, a great so one. Yeah, which I didn't have a problem with that. And then, uh, I don't know, I just heard a bunch of good stuff about Michigan Made. And uh, so I went that route. And honestly, they all kind of perform the same. I think Michigan Made just lasts a little bit longer oh, uh, in, in, in my experience. Shout out to M3. Predicate of breeding approved. Right. Yeah, they have, they, have a, they have a pretty decent product. And I guess Roots Organics, I just actually recently, so the grocery store I do go to just ran out of M3. So I just recently switched to uh, Roots Organic Lush. Oh, yeah. Nice. You liking that? I'm week two into it and I don't see, uh, one of my plants had a slight CalMag deficiency because she's just like, is a CalMag, uh, hog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, add a little bit to that, to that feed, but, uh, yeah, they all seem to be, I, I mean, I'm on, I think week three weeks in and they're pretty, I mean, they're like three foot bushy plants and all I've added was water other than that little bit of CalMag on that one variety. Nice. Um, but yeah, they seem pretty happy so far. Nice, man. All praying, you know, to me, if I see praying, that's when I'm, when I open the tent and they're praying, I feel excited. If they're just kind of just growing, I feel like it's an issue. Yeah. And I know what you mean, man. I absolutely know what you mean, but you're liking the lush. I like that. You know, nature's living soil. Great choice. I like it. Yeah. What are you using? 
I, I just do like a purple cow. It's a water only soil. And then I just stack a bunch of, a bunch of fun stuff like micro life and plant success, you know, like the orca and the king crab and, you know, photo plus and oh. mammoth pea and flower and shit like that. Just like, a lot of microbials, I guess. Yeah, Orca is an amazing product. I, uh, I had a, uh, a master grower introduce me to that. So anybody who's not using that should definitely uh, definitely look into that. Use that liquid myco Orca? That's Yeah, me too. I like that stuff a lot, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What about Recharge? Oh, yeah. Got a shout out, Recharge. I've, I've joked about it before, man, because the guys from Dude Grows make it, right? That's their product. Is it really? Yeah, I think so, dude. And uh, it's funny because I'm always saying like they're my competition. I don't really care. I, I, I always try to collab with competition and stuff. But um, the fact is... That recharge works fucking great. It might be my like number one can't live without a product. The recharge does, and the like, plant success. Does. Yeah, the recharge and the plant success and the photo plus are probably tied for top three. And yeah, <laughs> recharge is up there, man. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, they're like, my plants be doing well. The second I put a recharge in, they're paying basically the next day. So, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Shit. Shouting out, dude grows again. It's true, though, dude. They make a fucking great product. If that is them, someone, t- yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. But yeah, what else? Uh, you using Mammoth P? That's a good microbial booster. Yeah, yeah, I use the AFP. I have some, uh, gosh, I can't recall the, uh, yeah, I used a bunch of random uh, amendments that uh, an organic grow had turned me on to uh, not that long ago. Yeah, they make a difference, man, especially in that living soil. You got to get those fucking, those crobes, baby. All about the crobes. Yeah, I got some uh, some mic blasts, some vitamins and amino acids. Uh, what about photo photosynthesis plus? You guys, uh, you guys use that? Yeah, or yeah. That that? I just shouted out that product. And the vitamins and aminos is by the same line, dude. You're using a bunch of the fucking good shit. That's uh, that's microbe life hydro. That's great, man. Hey, can I come visit your garden? It sounds like I need to fucking smoke some of that bud because you're using all the right shit. <laughs> yeah, come on over, man. How far are you? <laughs> come on. Anybody, anybody playing, lives man. in Massachusetts, I'll share. <laughs> <laughs> cool, dude. Good to know, man. Good to know. Same goes for me. I'm in Chicago, but, um, but yeah, man, uh, what else do we have here? We're oh, damn that flew by. Uh, this is a, quite an easy interview, my friend. How about we wrap it up with some talk of the future? What are you, uh, what are you looking to either drop next? I kind I know you kind of talked about that or just any future projects that you have lined up. Yeah. So, uh, again, yeah, I mean, again, the whole point of why I am here and, uh, is basically it's just strictly community and that's all i really care about is just us all you know working together and and for me it's providing the best product for the community you know and and getting feedback and you know just hoping that everyone has a basically a good experience you know and then maybe using my stuff for for further breeding projects and stuff like that um in regards to the future i mean i've been doing a lot of stuff in massachusetts there has been talk i have had a conversation with a guy in california and a guy up in maine where they want to hire me as a master grower at a uh, facility in Massachusetts, and hopefully that does come through because just we're going to basically bring uh, the West Coast to the East Coast, and we do have a huge you know East Coast West Coast collaboration, and um, it would just be a really good thing for the community to to be able to access uh, the West Coast genetics on the East Coast, you know, because all we get is maybe Cali that's Cali weed that's been sent and maybe stepped on <laughs> from <laughs> through the mail or something, but uh, just to, you know people can get clones. Uh, you know, it's talks of, of all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that kind of pulls through. I don't, I'm not quite sure, so I can't really Damn. say that that's a real thing. That would be sick, though. Yeah, but in the meantime, I mean, I'm kind of personally looking at, uh, you know, we spoke about it a little bit earlier, is uh, trying to just figure out what it what it takes to uh, get a greenhouse license, which, you know, obviously I can't afford facility. I don't have capital. I don't have a couple million in the bank to do all that kind of stuff. But I feel like, you know, they do have craft licenses in Massachusetts, and I'm kind of hoping to maybe get us extremely small, the smallest craft license with a small part of land and maybe just kind of, uh-huh. you know, do, do what I do and pheno hunt and just maybe, uh, you know, try and take that route. I like that. Um, fuck yeah. Yeah. We'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm all you can do is, uh, all you can do is work at it. I mean, it's, it's an uphill battle in the industry, you know, but like for anybody that is trying to like, kind of get out there and, uh, sometimes you want to quit, man, but just keep going. Cause eventually, you know, it pulls through, you know, just keep posting, keep, keep trying. And, you know, you know, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't just keep, uh, just keep trying, you know, you know, I have a lot of people reach out to me and even there's the whole collaboration with the guy in Cali and Maine. Like if I wasn't posting on Instagram daily and just trying to put out good content, like they never would have reached out to me, you know? So it's like, you just never know, you right. know, you just never know. You just got to keep trying. Yeah, man. I, I absolutely love that. And like I said, it's, it's clear that you're just, you're grinding away. You're staying in your niche. You're building your following. you got a nice following already, man. So, uh, Godspeed. I hope you get that greenhouse. I hope you get to do all the pheno hunts that you could ever hope for. And, um, 
yeah, man, you are welcome back on Growcast anytime. This was a wonderful little uh, breeder feature we did here. I appreciate that, Jordan. Uh, you know, I do. Uh, I've followed you for a while now. Oh, and uh, I was actually supposed to start this off. I mean, big shout out to uh, to Rob, man. That was. Uh, oh yeah, man. Wasn't he the one to originally reach out to you and everything back before he passed in October? For the new listeners, uh, the the old producer he, Rob, who was just a powerhouse of a human being. Yeah, an, an extraordinary human for sure, mm-hmm. and a man, and a, uh, you know, husband. But uh, yeah, he uh, he yeah, we we brought him on to the cheap home grow. So uh, or. Um, no, growing with my fellow growers. Oh, that's what it was. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it, it used to be cheap home grow. And we switched it to growing with my fellow growers. And he's been on twice, I think. And then the second time, like, we, I literally was like, hey, I'm extremely sorry. Because I was like, you know, I was just extremely busy with, with like, my day job. Because I'm an electrician. That's my day job, by the way. Um, I'm an electrician. Oh, but, that, uh, helps. that helps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just doing that, like tr- doing everything. And he, when he came on, I was like, Hey man, I, I really wasn't trying to like ignore you. Like I just been extremely busy, but like, I really want to do the show. And he's like, and you know, this was at the end of our podcast when he came on and he was like, yeah, reach out to me. And then the very next, like literally the very next day or the next day after that, like the tragedy happened. And I was like, what the, I was like, is, is, I was com- completely flustered at <sighs> what happened, you know, man, that's really tough. I, I remember I, I forgot he was going on growing with my fellow growers. That's exactly right. I thought you were talking about you going on his show. No, no, but no. Yeah, he that was back in show. October. Yeah, that's right. Shit, man. Yeah. That is wild. Well, I appreciate you um, you know, shouting him out and, and rest in peace and, and and the condolences. I'm still in touch with uh, the widow and everything and yeah. and taking care of all that. But my God, what a what a good guy he was. So so thank you Extremely for saying that, man. And, and and that's why I saw you you were in my feed and you were in the DMs. He he used to run our Instagram. Right. So I saw you and I had to rebook. So thank you for saying that, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like a, a, I kind of feel like a douchebag by not following through uh, prior. But I mean, obviously. Oh, no, man. No one. Right. Had, no one could have ever. Yeah. But we all have. those. Right. F- f- yeah, man. I mean, we all have those feelings. But, um, but don't worry about that, man. That's that's not that's not a problem. I appreciate you, uh, you know, shouting him out here again on the podcast. And like I said, he will definitely be missed. And we give him lots of love in the Discord and stuff, but for the new listeners, go back and check out those older episodes, man. You just heard him if you uh, heard the Frenchie Cannoli thing. Maybe you new listeners were like, you know, who is the guy with Jordan? Well, that, that was the old producer, Rob, who uh, who tragically passed away back in October. So, so yeah, man. Condolences and uh, rest in peace. Thank Perfect. you, Predicative, for for taking the time today, man. This this was a great interview. Yeah, I appreciate that, man, for sure. I appreciate you bringing me on. Uh, it's It's been a while. And uh, yeah, I mean, feel free if you ever do like a... Uh... All right. If you, ever, if you ever need me, let me know, man. I'm here for you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That sounds great. I'd, I'd love to have you on maybe TV, Growcast TV sometime or the member podcast. we got a bunch of avenues, man. So yeah, I didn't even know you, I didn't even know you had that. Yeah. If, I mean, throw, <laughs> I, throw me in. Throw I need to do in. a better job. <laughs> I need to do a better job uh, promoting it, everybody. Patreon.com slash Growcast for incredible content you can go find. But um, before that, hit up Predicative Breeding on Instagram. Give them a follow. Pbreeding.com is where you can find his strains, his website, and even order them. So go and check it out. I know you will see a spike here. One more time, predicate, predictive. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you uh, being a guest today. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, Jordan. Take care. All right. All right, listeners. We'll see you next time. This is Jordan River and Predicative Breeding signing off saying, be safe out there and grow smarter. That's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Thank you to Predicative Breeding. Thank you to Photon Tech Lighting. Go to growcastpodcast.com forward slash photon brings you right to the website. Use code growcast for 5% off your powerful, efficient bar style LEDs. They also have the new SQ series. These are perfect for two by two and three by three tents. So they have smaller lights now. Ooh, wonderful. They're shaped like a square and you can put them right in your two by two or three by three tent and get that Photon Tech bumping. Not to mention their 465, 600, and 1000 watt CO2 models. Man, these things are powerful. Use code GROWCAST and send us a snapshot of your code on Instagram or email. And uh, we will enter you to win free seeds just for using codes. Like Photon Tech, baby. Oh, so what do we have? Rise of Rich is coming back on the show. We have... Uh, Jen Doe, a wonderful Instagram breeder, should be on the show soon. Ari from Dino Myco. Some great guests coming, folks, so stay tuned. I appreciate you listeners. I hope you're doing amazing things in your garden, and we'll see you next time on Growcast. Bye-bye. <laughs>